I've had a couple of people commenting on my previous few videos on where I paused the view where um, experience is somehow the truest reality that there is, or at least in terms of our, our ability to actually assess what's going on. Um, you know, I, everything that we actually know or understand, we only know or understand through our experiences. Experience is something of a bottleneck between whatever is outside and whatever is inside, if you want to talk in terms like that. Like that. Um, now, <laughs> this is, in many ways, a truly terrifying realization, or if you want to call it a realization, or it's a terrifying opinion, I guess, if you disagree with it. Um, why? Well, <laughs> what, if, what if you had a horrific experience? You know, like, what if you hallucinated, or if you, um, I don't know, panicked for wrong reasons or something, panicked over something that you really didn't need to panic over. Um, you know, it did, <laughs> was what happened real? <laughs> like, what does it mean when you confer reality onto something like that? Um, what does it mean when you confer reality onto a moment of primal horror? <laughs> um, we're back at uh, existential panic, and we're back, I guess, at, uh, at Zofe, right? Um, <laughs> what do you do when you look into the pit of hell, the pit of horror, and you say, this is real? <laughs> Um, well, you, I don't know, some people, I suppose, wouldn't laugh when that happened. They would possibly go insane or something. I don't know. I can't really see how that would actually drive you insane. I can see how it can cause extreme anxiety and uh, extreme aversion to ever look into that headspace ever again. But I, I find that um, people that, that, that discuss experience the way that I do... Um, I would say that you'd need to be fairly self-disciplined. Um, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do drugs. Um, I don't, you know, do anything extreme. I do meditate a lot, and I do some peculiar meditative practices that I've described elsewhere in other videos. It's basically hatha yoga with certain types of, I guess you'd call it tantric meditations, just mantra meditation and stuff like that. I don't believe in God, I don't believe in any supernatural stuff, I don't believe in any of that crap, but I do sort of think that there's more to reality than hard science can explain. Um, or at least as hard science stands now, I'll put it that way. Um, hard problem of, problem of consciousness being one of them. But there's a reason why I sort of have that sort of penchant for self-discipline when I'm dealing with sorts of things like this, like with deep meditation. If you're meditating for a very long period of time, or if you're really focused and you do have some sort of weird experience that you cannot explain, it's a very good idea to be in control of the situation. <laughs> um, if you're going to have a moment of existential panic, or if you're going to bring on a, a state that looks like that, you'd better be in as much of control of your faculties as you possibly can. And drugs and alcohol or whatever, while in that state, can hamper your ability to sort of control the situation when you're in a really terrifying, um, really terrifying state, or you've realized something, or you're in some sort of frightening experiential state. Uh, you can be equally derailed by going into a state of existential bliss if you're on drugs, because then you'll sort of, you, you may end up actually going deeper into drugs or something like that. So if you're going to meditate and you're going to sort of get into the existential stuff, I think that you have to be careful because meditation can lead to that sort of belief that what you're actually experiencing is absolutely and unarguably real. Um, and in fact, there is sort of a, I wouldn't say intellectual justification for that point of view, but you can actually reason it through and say, yeah, it really, the experience is the conduit through which we have to know absolutely everything that we quote-unquote know. So that makes it real. So then you go into deep meditation and you have an existential crisis, and now what? <laughs> you just you can't tell yourself, oh, that was an illusion. You just convinced yourself that that's the highest type of reality. Now, when people have chronic anxiety, um, and you know you get into certain people's heads, say like um, H.P. Lovecraft comes to mind, or uh, Thomas Ligotti, or whatever, and there's this underlying feel underneath everything. A lot of weird fiction is like this, where 
they're describing some pretty bizarre events that you, you're not really all that convinced by. I don't believe that there's this thing waiting under the ocean called Cthulhu, and I don't believe that, you know, there's, you know, that, that uh, reality is fundamentally horrific. But they create an atmosphere that refers to something, some sort of experiential state, some sort of vibe you get from them. Um, that, you know, they're, they're, they're referring to something purely existential here. They're, they're, they're illustrating existential malaise or existential fear or even panic or crisis through the use of pro plot devices like monsters, aliens, you know, things like this, witchcraft or whatever. Um, but they're, they're, those are plot devices. They are referring to an actual experiential state or a possibility of an experiential state. And if something in you tells you that that experience is real and you don't want to face it, what you've got then is, I would say, chronic anxiety. Chronic anxiety of a particularly nasty and intractable type. Because there is something horrible in the back of your mind, in the back of your consciousness, that you cannot face. Because something in you says that it's real. <laughs> and um, the unfortunate fact is, in if you've convinced yourself, or at least in some level you're saying that these experiences are real, you're playing with fire. You may actually even be playing with your sanity. Um, that's why they always tell you when you're getting into things like deep meditation and all that, you need somebody to guide you. You need somebody who can stand over and perhaps even watch you while you're doing it. Who can sort of make sure that you don't go into some sort of mad state. The Indian, ancient Indians would have said that you require a guru. Um, but, you know, a guru is an interesting thing because, again, you, 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 you hear terms like guru and you start thinking religion. You start thinking Eastern mysticism and you start thinking things like um, belief and all that kind of thing. And you're te you tend to dismiss it. But what if you dismiss something sort of intellectually but your emotions will have none of it? Your emotions still believe in it all. Then you've got anxiety and you've got powerful anxiety. Um, you may have something like existential angst. And you may have that every moment of the day. I believe personally that H.P. Lovecraft has existential angst, or had it during the course of his lifetime. Thomas Ligotti says that he does have it. Um, I think that a lot of people who actually have a profoundly negative view of existence are actually referring to intractable, never-ending existential angst. Their intellect tells them that there's nothing to be afraid of, but their emotions are not listening. Um, and when you have that kind of a disconnect, you've got inner conflict that can only be resolved by constantly bombarding yourself with irrelevancies, constant distractions. Now, this is, again, sapphi again, right? You're sort of saying that you need to be distracted from that moment of primal horror. But again, I would say, no. You can face that pit of horror. You can overcome that anxiety. But it takes long, hard work, and you have to make sure that you're doing it correctly, that you're not going off half-cocked. No drugs. No dilettantism. This is serious stuff. This is your mind you're talking about here. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, it, it's not as though I'm, I'm positing anything weird, but I'm just trying to deconstruct what takes place in, in the human psyche. Uh, you know, just what are these states? What do they mean? What do what do these experiences mean? What does anxiety itself mean? What does horror mean? But on, by the same token, what does bliss mean? What does, uh, what does it mean to feel completely at one with the universe, if you want? The opposite end of horror and everything, and how you can be sort of derailed by that feeling if you're not in complete control of the situation. This... this um, video may not make a lot of sense to a lot of people, and I don't blame anybody for being somewhat head scratching about it. Sort of going, yeah, this, he he does weird videos. This one is one of his weirder ones. Um, but again, I'm talking about things that take place purely at the experiential level, and the experiential level is about as weird as things get. 